Hi, this is Yuri. In this video, I will speak about the concept of lazy evaluation, which is one of the most important concepts in Haskell. Believe it or not, this is the same idea what the writers of the C compiler could use to generate more effective codes. Let's see laziness in practice. We will start in C. If we are not lazy and do not think forward, we do our tasks in an order in which we add them. This is one approach, but in most cases it is not so efficient. See what is happening here. Nothing printed, just the program started and program terminated text. But both P calls are interesting. At the first call, it is clearly visible that the if statement is unnecessary. And at the second call, we are not using the return value at all. So in this context, the line 14 seems like a procedure and not as a function call. In some languages, it is not possible to call a function if we are not using its return value. So we cannot use them as individual statements, just as part of an expression. But here and now we are in C, so we can do this. It is normal, because we usually think of functions as calculations, and when a calculation has happened, we could substitute it with its result. So the P above is basically 42. Strange, but it's okay. If the warning is disturbing, we can switch it off, if we were so lucky that it had been turned on. The question is that can we optimize out these unnecessary effectless statements or not? And the answer is yes, if we can detect them. This is where the expressing power of a language comes to play. If we have to use our functions in expressions, this restriction gives us a way to express our intention. But it is not its only benefit. When we are programming, the source text is a communication channel between two programmers, which helps the reader to understand not just what we have written, but why we did that. And at the same time, it helps the compiler also to use the extra information to optimize our code. This is why it's important to master a language, and after a certain point, do not compare them to one another. Just like when we are learning foreign languages. At the first time, we are learning it with the help of another language. This helps us to see the similarities and differences. After a time, we could translate sentences and we are able to express our thoughts. But this is just the beginning of the road. To express deeper things like idioms or proverbs, we have to learn about the culture and much more. This is the level where we can optimize our sentences to express more with less words. And there are awkward cases when we want to speak about our feelings on a language which was mostly designed to express our thoughts. In this case, seemingly, we must elaborate things and hacking the language, and we are inventing poetry. I feel something similar in the case of template metaprogramming in C++. I think usually the essence of art is abstraction. I do not want to be too philosophical. And now, add then another print. P has been called twice. We can say it must be executed because it contains an output operation, but we cannot optimize out because it has a visible effect that the user can see. If this was our thought, we are understanding the concept of pure and impure functions, which has side effects. This is like the observer effect. The act of observing something changes its behavior. And this is how you can trigger execution in Haskell. Just use the result. I will be more precise soon. If someone requires the result of our work, we must do that work. But when? This is the question. Because we could be lazy. To understand what this is mean, first we have to understand what is a sequence point. But don't worry, it is not like the recursion, what we have to understand before we could understand the recursion. Sequence has an end. And if we have a finite number of iterations, we could create a sequence. Did you recognize the loop unrolling in my sentences? Okay, so a sequence point is something which corresponds to the effects of the executions. In this example, it doesn't matter which line will be executed first. Let's imagine that we are copy-pasting our former unit test 
to create a new, slightly different one. At the beginning of the test cases, when we are declaring our objects, usually we are doing it always in the same order to help readability. And do not think of that the constructors or initializer functions could have side effects later during the lifetime of the program. If you would like to write really good tests, it would be necessary to permute the statements that we design to be independent. In this way, we could be able to detect hidden errors during regression testing. So, do not copy-paste the code. Copy-paste the meaning. This idea will lead us to functors. In a Haskell function, we could not create side effects. A function must be something similar to its mathematical definition. It must only depend on its parameters and must be deterministic, theoretically, even if it is not clearly visible from the syntax. Here, f depends on s. However, it is not mentioned among its formal parameters, but of course, we could transform it like this. We can add s to the formal parameters, and at the place of the call, we could pass s as an actual parameter. In this way, we could produce a function which only depends on its parameters. If only one parameter is allowed to pass, we could create a struct from all of the formal parameters. The other way is the currying, what we are using a lot when we are programming in Haskell. So far so good. The input part is ready. What about the outputs? We have to return all of them. We must not use out parameters, pointers, and we mustn't mutate anything with the help of the parameters. So how can we return multiple parameters with these conditions? We could use a struct. Now we are almost ready. Okay, you could say I understand this, but how can we print to the console or do networking with this functional toolset? And how can we produce different executions if we are always deterministic? What about the user inputs? And now the most interesting viewpoint. Bear with me. User inputs are nothing more than pre-existing test cases. We could write our test inputs right now. For example, we could add 10 test inputs to our test system and pipe it to our program. From the program's point of view, it doesn't matter that the input comes from the user or from the test system. If it matters, our system is not really functional. Deterministic things could be seen non-deterministically from the program's point of view, and for this we only need to have a list. If we have a user input, just replace it with a list and feed it to our program. I'm sure that if you are lazy and think forward, and you do not want to type your test inputs for every execution, you will create something like this. Read an input from the user and print it or use a pre-typed input text. Cool, isn't it? Now we can simulate a user. But what about the word? The word is always changing, remember to the river. And the earth goes around the sun and so on. Take a picture about the whole universe and define a type to be able to store it. Because we are using abstractions, we could eliminate most of its parts and details and create a table which represents a function morphism and give back an another transformed copy of the whole word and because you could return with a composite type beside the whole transformed word you are also able to return other values you just arrived into the world of haskell this topic is really deep and there are a large number of resources out there i just would like to give you some terms to find them and if you wish i could create videos in this topic later start ghci let a be 1 plus 1 as an element of the int type value set. Do similar things for b. And define c as a plus 1. In GHCI, we can use sprint to get information about the evaluations in our program. Here, underscores indicate a tank, which tells us that it hasn't been evaluated. To trigger evaluation or execution, we have to use its result. So, for example, we could print it. So to the word with an empty console, we could assign another word with a console in which we can read the result of the show C. If we were really lazy, 
This is the point when we have to do something, because someone would like to see the result of our work. As you can see, right now A and C are evaluated. But of course, it is not true for B. I hope now you can feel the changes in your mind. If you found my approach interesting, please leave me a comment below, subscribe and follow me. I wish you a good journey. We'll continue in the next video. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.